Hey everyone, after weeks of deep diving and distro hopping to find my ideal Linux setup, I've curated a list of 25 distributions I've tested over the last few weeks. In this video, I'm going to put each one under the microscope, sharing my personal take, a distinct pro and con, and my overall subjective rating based on my experience. So whether you're a seasoned veteran or on this same journey, join me to see how these 25 distros stack up in 2025. First, let's run through each of the distros with a high level pro and con I found when using each. Kicking things off with Ubuntu, it's huge community community and software support make it incredibly easy to use, a real pro for beginners and general desktop computing. However, I sometimes find it a bit bloated with pre-installed software, which can be a con. Also, with great community sometimes comes great controversy. While the community is huge, that sometimes hinders the experience. Next up, Fedora. This one's a pro for developers and early adopters, offering a leading edge GNOME experience with the latest tech, which is the main reason that I went with Fedora after Mint. The con is its shorter release cycle, meaning more frequent, sometimes disruptive upgrades, some of which I too experienced just after a few weeks of use. Linux Mint is a pro for Windows switchers with its familiar interface and excellent out-of-the-box feel. It is the first distro I learned Linux on back in the day, so it still holds a special place for me. The con, it tends to be conservative with software versions, so you might not always have the very latest, plus it requires some customization to make it feel modern. For those wanting Arch Power without the hassle, there's Manjaro. Its user-friendly installer and pre-configured desktops are a huge pro, but as a rolling release, a con is the higher chance of a broken update if you're not careful. Pop OS is a pro for developers and gamers, offering fantastic NVIDIA support and that intuitive cosmic desktop. The con is that its unique features are somewhat tied to System76 hardware, even if it runs great elsewhere. Now, if you're looking for ultimate control, Arch Linux is your, well, pro overall. It's a rolling release with the latest software built from the ground up. The big con, though, is its steep learning curve and manual setup, definitely not for beginners. Debian is legendary for its stability and reliability, and massive pro for critical systems and users who prioritize a rock-solid foundation. The con is that its stable branch often uses significantly older software. OpenSUSE's Pro is its powerful configuration tool and the choice between a stable leap or rolling tumbleweed release. However, the con can be a steeper learning curve than more of the beginner-friendly options. Zorin OS is Pro is its elegant design mimicking Windows and Mac OS for easy migration. The con is that some Pro features, like certain layouts, require a paid purchase. I didn't find this much appealing when I was using this release and out of the box it felt a bit dated to me personally. For aesthetics, Elementary OS is boasting a stunning macOS inspired interface focused on simplicity. The con is the strong opinionated design which can limit customization for many users. I actually find it less macOS like and found it more like Chrome OS. I didn't mind this one but ultimately it's not for me personally. MX Linux is pro for its lightweight fast and stable Debian base along with its useful MX tools. The con its default desktop might feel basic or dated to those used to flashier environments. Solus is pro is its independent development and custom desktop offering a modern curated experience. The con is a smaller package repository compared to larger distros. For security professionals, Kali Linux is packed with penetration testing and forensic tools. The con is that it's absolutely not for general daily use due to its inherent risks, but it serves a pretty niche user base and community. Then we have Parrot OS, known for its security and privacy as well, offering a robust suite of tools, but like Kali, the con is that it's highly specialized and not recommended for everyday computing for everyday users. Gen 2 offers unparalleled control and optimization by compiling everything from source, a massive pro for power users. The huge con is that this compilation is incredibly time consuming and it demands a deep knowledge of Linux. Alpine Linux's pro is that it's incredibly small footprint, security focus, and efficiency makes it ideal for containers. The con is its use of its very specific libraries which can cause compatibility issues with some other desktop software. Void is a pro for its independence, unique package manager, and its fast overall system performance, offering a minimalist rolling release. The con is that it's a smaller community base and there are far fewer pre-built packages. If you're reviving old hardware, Antics is great for that. It's extremely lightweight and it's bloat free. The con is that it's very basic and visually the aesthetics aren't great as it prioritizes function over really flashy design. Slackware, one of the oldest distros, is pro because it's extremely stable and its Unix-like 
simplicity is great. The big con is the lack of automatic dependency resolution, making package management very manual. For highly reproductible systems, Nix is a pro for its revolutionary declarative configuration. The con, however, is the very steep learning curve due to its unique language and approach. Endeavor offers really a lot of pro features, providing a near-peer Arch Linux experience with a beginner-friendly installer. The con is that you still need to be comfortable with Arch concepts for ongoing maintenance. Garuda is, well, a pro for gamers and power users with highly optimized performance, great snapshots, and stunning visuals. The con, though, is that it could be resource intensive due to the customizations. Catchy OS is a pro for its performance, and it's really for performance enthusiasts, offering an optimized kernel and compiler flags for incredible speed on modern CPUs. The con is its niche community, and the performance boost might not always be noticeable for casual use. Baron OS is pro for its highly polished and customized desktop, making Windows and Mac OS users feel at home. The con is its underlying Ubuntu base updates might be slightly delayed as a derivative. Finally, KDE is a pro for Plasma enthusiasts, delivering an absolute latest stable KDE Plasma desktop. The con is that while Plasma is cutting edge, the underlying Ubuntu LTS base updates are less frequent, leading to occasional inconsistencies. Let's jump right into my overall subjective ratings for all 25 distros presented across three different tier systems. First, we'll look at the complexity tier, categorizing them for beginners, security, advanced custom, and specific use. Then I'll reveal my S tier rating, putting some distros in S, A, B, C, or D based on my evaluation. Finally, you'll see my most subjective ratings in my ratings tier, separating them into top, meh, and nope, purely based on my usage. Starting with complexity, this tier evaluates how easy easy a distro is to get into, its learning curve, and its typical use case. In our beginners tier, representing distributions that are generally easy to install and user-friendly, we have Ubuntu, Linux Mint, Pop OS, Zorin OS, Elementary OS, MX Linux, Farin OS, and Manjaro. These are fantastic starting points for new users. Moving on to the security tier, these distributions are specifically designed with security, penetration testing, or privacy in mind. Here you'll find Kali Linux, Parrot OS, and Alpine Linux. These are powerful tools, but definitely for specialized use cases. For the advanced custom tier, these distros cater to users who want deep control customization and are comfortable with a steeper learning curve. This includes Arch Linux, Garuda, Nix OS, Void Linux, Slackware, Endeavor OS, Gen2, and Cache OS. These are where you'll build your systems exactly how you want them. And finally, the specific use tier. These distributions excel in particular niches or have unique characteristics that set them apart for certain user types. In this category, we have Fedora, Debian, KDA, Neon, Solus, OpenSUSE, and Antics. Each serves a distinct purpose from cutting edge development to extreme stability for resource efficiency. Moving on to my S tier rating, this is where I weigh overall experience, polish, community support, and how I typically recommend a distro. In this coveted S tier, representing the best of the best, I have Ubuntu, Linux Mint, Fedora, and Pop OS. These are truly top tier tier choices for a wide range of users. Stepping into the A tier, excellent all around options that narrowly miss the S tier. I have MX Linux, Endeavor, OpenSUSE, Elementary OS, Debian, Manjaro, and Zorin. These are highly reliable and strong contenders. In my B tier, it's comprised of solid choices that are good for specific use cases or users willing to learn a bit more. I have Garuda, KDE, Farin, Solus, and Arch Linux. They offer great experiences for their intended audiences. Next up in the C tier, these are really niche distributions or ones that require more technical knowledge, making them less ideal for typical daily use. This tier includes Kashi, Kali, Void, Nix, Gen2, and Parrot. Finally, my D tier, these are the least recommended for general desktop use, making them more for highly specialized uses or just they have a very steep learning curve. So so I threw them in this tier. In this tier, I have Alpine, Antics, and Slackware. They're powerful, don't get me wrong, but powerful for specific tasks, not typical daily drivers. And now for the most subjective part of my whole video, my personal ratings. This is truly about my experience, my preferences, and how these distros really clicked with me during my journey and testing each one of these. In my top tier, these are distributions that really stood out and provided an exceptional experience. Linux Mint, Fedora, Ubuntu, and Arch Linux. 
These resonated the most with my workflow and personal preferences. Moving to my meh tier, these are distros that were good, perfectly functional, but just didn't quite hit that sweet spot for me personally. Debian, Cache, Elementary, Kali, Pop OS, KDE Neon, Manjaro, and OpenSUSE. They have their strengths, but for my use, they were just meh. And finally, the nope tier. These are distributions that for various reasons simply didn't work for me during my testing or presented challenges that made them a no-go for my personal setup. Alpine, Nix, Endeavor, Antics, Farron, Garuda, Gen2, MX, Void, Parrot, Slackware, Solus, and Zoran OS. Don't get me wrong, many of these are great, they just weren't for my workflow or didn't really work that well with my setup. After testing all 25 of these distributions and countless hours of distro hopping on my primary desktop, I can confidently say that I've landed on Arch Linux as my ideal setup. While I initially used my Linux for work dot files and dot files installer, which by the way is excellent, you should definitely check that out, link in the description, my journey led me specifically to Omarchi. I've spent enough time chatting here, so I'll save the why for an upcoming video. If you're curious about Omarchi, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. I'll also leave a link to it in the description of this video. Okay, that's a wrap on this deep dive into these 25 Linux distributions in 2025. If you have any questions, your own ratings, or a distro recommendation that I missed, drop it in the comments below. I look forward to the discussion. As always, thank you for watching. Take care and stay safe.